Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. So let's do this, though, because I really want to go into these five things since you didn't know about this. I really want to yeah, go. Definitely. I, yeah, definitely. I don't know them, so I'm, let's do it. Yeah. Let's go through these five things. Let's, uh, so let me see. We'll, we'll start from one. Okay, number one, Sergeant Omar Crispy Avila is a retired U.S. Army sergeant and wounded veteran. So, I know. Uh, you know that. No, I didn't. I, was I wounded? <laughs> <laughs> it says, according to an interview in Austin Fit Magazine, Avila shipped out to Iraq in 2004 for his first and last deployment in the midst of an ambush. Sergeant Avila's vehicle drove over a 200 pound IED, resulting in catastrophic damage. With the IED hitting their fuel tank, it sent Avila's vehicle six feet up in the air, killing one. Wow. Being in a kill zone, Avila climbed back in the turret of the inflamed vehicle and provided cover for his teammates. So, that's amazing. That's an amazing fact right there. Uh, deployed 2006, got one in 2007. Uh, what else did they say that was wrong? There was two oh, people so there's I a couple died. things wrong right there. <laughs> yeah, two people died, not one. Um, okay, they didn't check with you on this at all, then. I, hey, come on. I don't know. I'm what do you expect? Yeah, can we at least mention the people? So you said it was two people lost their lives here. I know. Uh, can we can we mention their names? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's Specialist Harkey and Staff Sergeant Campos. Okay, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, you know, heavy heavy dot com. If if anyone ever hears this. Maybe you guys can uh, correct that. Uh, I'm scrolling through it here. It does show your, um, your, uh, you know, uh, the uh, Purple Heart that you have. I'm guessing this is one of your pictures from IG. Like it's a, it's the Purple Heart in your hands. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Um, it says there, this is an award I never wanted, but I'd rather me earn uh before any of my brothers have to go through the pain uh that it comes with so uh let's yeah. see uh it says after so just to go on for this number one it says after 100 surgeries and 15 years since his deployment avila is alive and well he is a recipient of the purple heart combat infantry badge as well as a thriving entrepreneur and social media mogul social media <laughs> mogul you're saying you just have Instagram. Uh, I mean, I know you, I know you have an OnlyFans account, Christy. <laughs> don't <laughs> don't lie, brother. Just to let us know. We can put it out there right now. Social media. Mo- <laughs> that's where the real money uh, comes from. Yeah. yeah, that's where the money comes from. That's where I buy all the guns from. <laughs> right, right. What's the, so what do you think? Did, have you had a hundred over 100 surgeries? Yeah, 103, and it's been uh, wow. 13 years, not 15 wow okay wow that's all right <laughs> that's amazing okay <laughs> um all right so let's uh you guys want to go on to number two let's go on to number two here we'll keep it oh that was just number one that yeah. was just number one man <laughs> oh wow number... they, they really went on there and wrote a lot huh yeah and they're putting a lot of stuff it looks like all these uh pictures they're throwing in here come from your ig it says number two avila is a vocal member of the national rifle association Nope, never been, never will be. <laughs> no, 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 no. Wow. No. Really? Uh, to the no. Really? They can't get yeah. anything right. Okay, so no. it says, okay, hold on a second. Let me see who wrote this. Wait a second. <laughs> so, We're going to have to go. tweet at them because it's so wrong. Yeah, who wrote this article? Like, um, make some <laughs> uh, it says by Spencer Par- Parlier. Parlier. Spencer Parlier, dude. <laughs> You might want to actually correct some of the stuff in this then if you yeah. didn't do it. So uh, let me go on and read that. It says, Avila's run in with Trump Jr. was not a coincidence as both are vocal supporters of the NRA and the Second Amendment. Throughout Avila's Instagram, there are pro-gun pictures, messages, and memes. And uh, show some pictures like this one I'm looking at is a dude with a a MAGA hat on. It says, nobody needs an AR-15. Nobody needs a whiny little either. Yet here you are. (laughs) Uh, This is from... (laughs) This is from... This is from... uh, This is probably a picture you took on the floor of the NRA. 
Um, and but and it goes, but yeah. Yeah, so it goes on to say Avila doesn't just blindly praise the organization, which has recently been on the fire, not only by activists, but also government officials. The retired Army veteran took to Instagram to state his frustrations with the higher-ups of the NRA. And it goes on, it posts a, a letter from the board, from NRA, and all that kind of stuff, and, and then your comments um, on that. But uh, you're saying that you, you're not, you, were you ever an NRA member? Uh, no, I've never been. <laughs> okay. I've never worked. Uh, I, love, I love how they just assume because you went to an NRA meeting that you have to be a member. Yeah. And, so uh, were you like ever a paid spokesperson or official representative of the NRA in any way? Nope. Never. Oh, never. <laughs> okay. the, only reason, the only reason I go to the NRA shows is because it's an actual show where you can walk the floor and meet everybody that right. follows you mm-hmm. yeah. and actually yeah. interact with people. But I've never been a supporter of the NRA. I've never been a member, and nowhere I'll ever support it till they get rid of uh, uh, Wayne Lapierre. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're, so you're right along the lines with the rest of us, mm-hmm. and pretty yeah. much all, all the gun guys out there in the world. This is interesting. Yeah. So I guess they just put you in there by pro. So these guys never interviewed you. No, I, I honestly had no idea that this was even a thing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> let's go to number three. Let's go to number three here then. <laughs> We're going to do all of these. This is getting interesting now. I can't wait to hear the other, the other three. Uh, number three, Avila is a power lifter and champion for other burn victims. Today, Avila uses social media to showcase his physical development since the injuries he suffered in Iraq. One quick scroll through his Instagram account shows how committed he is to power lifting as well as motivating others who have su- suffered severe burn injuries. It seems to me, um, and that's probably true, right? Everything there is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Power, yeah, I, I did yeah. the whole power lifting thing for, for yeah. a long time. Yeah, and then there's a video that you've posted on there of you lifting. Uh, it seems like this guy interviewed you by looking at your IG. It sounds Pretty about much. right. So that's, that's probably what he did, I because I <laughs> never did this interview with anybody. Oh, wow, and okay. Me, I remember, I, I mean, I, I've done a lot of interviews on, on the phone, on TV, mm-hmm. everywhere, and I don't remember this one. Oh, okay. It says uh, he uses social media to develop relationships with other burn victims as well as trying to lift them up. His relationship with Jadiant Quinn is commonly shown throughout his page. Who's Jadiant Quinn? So Jaden is, uh, is a young kid that was burned at the age of three. He's, uh, okay. he's 18, 19 now. Yeah, he's 19 oh, now. Okay, yeah, um, you've got was, pictures. He, yeah, so he was severely burned. He was burned 98% of his body. Um, hmm. I, I, it was brought to my attention on social media so I reached out to him and I was like, "Hey man, I hope I hope you're doing well. Like, if you ever need to talk, let me know." And then it happened that he was going to have a surgery in Galveston. So uh, my fiance and I drove up there, met up with him, had lunch with his mom and him, and and just got to know each other. We became really good friends. You know, it, it's a it's a bond that we both share being burned. And uh, you know, he knew that I understood him in, in a way that no one else can. And so we became really good friends and. We're friends still today, and um, not only him, but I do a lot of stuff with with burn kids, just because um, you know there's a lot of kids out there that that are going through through it. And yeah. when I was burned, I was 21 years old. I had lived my life. I was a football athlete. I'd been in the service. I, you know, did my first sharing of running around, drinking, and partying, and all these things. I lived a normal life. I, I lived an all American life. And these kids are growing up with burns. And let's let's be realistic. I don't care how much people think their kids are saints and one other. There's still kids out there who are little assholes and bully other kids. And he was getting for bullied sure. because of the way that he looked. Mm-hmm. And so I always wanted to be that protective for those kids and let them know that I'm here and look at the things that I'm capable of doing. If I can do them, you can do them. So I like, I like um, inspiring these kids and pushing them and, and showing them that you can. And, and that they can talk to me whenever they can talk to their parents because, let's face it, you know, we've all had issues that you don't want to talk to your parents about, but you can find in someone else. Mm-hmm. That's who I want to be for these kids, for these burn patients. And, and that's just that I feel like that is why I was spared and that's why I was given a third chance of life. Yeah. Um, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think um, it's a superpower that, that, that more people need to be able to live in your own skin for lots of different reasons. Um, you know, it, it's tough when you have to go through something like that, but I think 
one of the things that most of us can't do, even if even if we look like on the outside like the most beautiful, perfect human being, it's really difficult to learn how to live in your own skin. Mm-hmm. It is. It, I mean, it wasn't something that happened overnight. I'm, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that, like, I woke up one day and I was like, all righty, boys, let's go out there and cheer the world on. I mean, no, I definitely went through my struggles. I experienced, you know, hardship. I experienced, uh, you know, what, how the cruel the world can be. And, and um, all that shaped me up to be. And I've never been a quitter. My dad has never allowed me, neither has my mom, to be that type of person. So, um, you know, I just did what I did. I put my head down and kept pushing forward. And, and uh, along the way, I've learned a lot of things. You know, this happened when I was 21 years old. And, you know, at the time, I was still dumb and acting, you know, like a 21-year-old. Um, but as I got older, I realized I made a lot of changes in my life. And, and you know, I've had a lot of great mentors. Uh, and that's what's ha- helped me to who I am today. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, let's see here. I want to go on and hit as many of these as I can. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We want, what are we, we at? Number four? Yeah. We're not, uh, yeah. So it, it, <laughs> it, before we go to number four, it did talk about you. Um, uh, it says uh, Avila also partnered with organizations to help out injured veterans and burn victims. For example, Avila uh, teamed up with Sons of the Flag to surprise a friend of Avila's, Owen, with a new bike. Owen is also a victim of severe burns and amputation. So that's all yep. true. Yep. That's okay. True. Yep. So um, number four, Avila is a vocal critic of the VA. Um, yes. That's true. Okay. It says uh, yep. being a veteran and a veteran who has suffered severe injuries due to combat, Avila has become an outspoken agent trying to improve and keep the VA accountable. Three years ago when I walked into the VA to see my doctor about my wound reopening, she looked at it and said, you're fine. It will heal up. Two weeks later, I had my leg amputated below the knee because a doctor that doesn't work at the VA found cancer um, in my nub, Avila wrote in an Instagram post. Wow. That true? It is. So that was one of the things where um, I I walked in and I, uh, you know, I, I, I had this, uh, this, this wound of mine under my foot opened up and it wasn't healing. I had been dealing with it six weeks and nothing was happening. So I walked in there and I was like, hey, I'm concerned about this. Like, I really, really want to get this looked at. She looked at it, gave me some meds, and was, she was like, you'll be fine. Nothing's going to happen. And I just I just knew I didn't trust her. I, I, didn't, I knew there was something wrong with my body. Like, you've known me, what, two years? Because I've been here now, but I've had this body for nine years. Like, mm-hmm. no. So I went, I went back to San Antonio to Brook Army Medical Center where I've had all my surgeries, where I've been seen by every single doctor there. And I talked to them and I said, hey, listen, guys, there's something going on here that is that is not sitting right with me. There's something going on. And um, they, uh, they, 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 they looked at it and they said, all right, we're going to have to do surgery. Let's close it up and let's move forward, you know? And I said, okay. So we did and... Um, you know, what, while I was under surgery, they are like, um, hey, you have uh, cancer here. So they took some of it out, uh, but they weren't able to get all of it, obviously. And um, when I came out, they told me, that, hey, um, you know, uh, you can't, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, they were like, we brought you out because... We didn't want to keep you on there for so long, but you still have cancer in there. We got to come in and do a bunch of other different things. And then uh, and we're going to go back in and, and, and take it all out. And I said, that's fine with me. Let's let's do what needs to be done. And that's kind of where um, where all that went. I ended up going back for another surgery for it. And then, you know, the rest was history. Wow. OK. Yeah, I think they couldn't like do all of they couldn't you couldn't make those decisions immediately. Definitely not while no. you were under. Yeah. No, not at all. Yeah. Um, so the the VA thing that's true. We hear that from um, from uh, lots of uh, veterans out there. Uh, do you think anything's gotten better? I know that uh, since the Trump administration uh, took over here, they're supposed to be trying to uh, change things, but obviously that's going to take you know some serious amount of time here. Do you think things are getting better? Do you think they've got a long way to go? What, what's your opinion on this? Um, you know, so the VA is never going to be, um, I don't think, unless we fire everybody and start fresh, mm-hmm. I don't think it's going to change. Um, I think there's 
there's as much corruption there as there is in in Mexico, and and everybody's in for it. Um, it's sad to see. I've seen it at, at at a level where you know you get generals that retire out of the army and they take a VA job and they give jobs to their friends that they promised before they got out. Yeah. So um, it's just sad to see, man, because at this point they don't longer care about the health and care of of our veterans. They care about putting money in their pocket. So. I think everybody needs to get fired. I think we need to restructure the whole thing again, and then, and then maybe it, it'll actually be something good for the veteran community. Yeah. Did you want to add something to this, Patrick? No, no. I'm just, I'm just listening in. Yeah. Um, I think with a lot of things, a lot of the major problems we have here in America, the way to deal with it is to hit the reset button. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Well, yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah. A lot of people are afraid of doing that, but we really do. There's just so many things. And this is like a major, major thing to me because, you know, when there are people who voluntarily go to war and and, and fight for their country, right, regardless of whether you agree with, you know, they don't, you don't make, get to make the decisions about what wars you fight, where you go, right, and how you serve. Yeah. When you do that, though, they need to serve you. You know, I mean... It's not hard. To, I mean, you know, yes, we go out there and do it selflessly. Like there's, we're not doing it to, we're not doing it to um, receive a pat on the back or a thank you or anything. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not for any of those. It's, it's a civil duty. And at the end of the day, the only thing that I think we're asking for is just to be taking care of our health when we uh, when we get out. That's it. Mm-hmm. There's, there's not a lot that they're that we're asking for. It's just. Hey, if the day comes and I'm sick or I'm still struggling with, you know, with a knee or a back or something that happened during my time in service, please help me take care of it. That's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. I mean, there's no there's there's nothing else other than that. Like, just help me with my injuries. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's a shameful thing, man. Uh, hopefully at some point here uh, we can actually do something about this but i don't know i don't know we could we could we could come up with corporate greed yeah well we could we could just print up six trillion dollars man (laughs) you know what i'm saying i mean another six yeah you know this is this is um insanity okay let's uh let's finish out number five and then we can get into we can get into some interesting stuff here but i want to get i want to get number five so all of this was uh this was all solid right number four Okay, yep. uh, let's go on. Number five, Avila is an avid Trump supporter. So it says Avila's relationship with Trump Jr. did not begin at the NRA convention in Indianapolis. In fact, Avila got to hear President Trump speak in San Antonio in early April. Shows a picture of you, uh, uh, Trump Spence. You got on a suit. Looking yeah. good. Looking good in the suit, by the <laughs> way. Um and it says Avila was even able to get a signed "Make America Great Again" hat by the president. Is that true? Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, like I said, I met you know Junior way way before that. Um, mm-hmm. I wouldn't say I'm like a die diehard. I mean, there's a lot of people out there that that mm-hmm. you know Trump can do no wrong, and I've never been that type. Man, I, I see. You know the mistakes that he makes, and I, I tend to call him out, and and, mm. and and that's fine because you know even Junior is like, hey, you know, let's talk about this and let's make this. You know, what do you think about topics like this? And I'm like, well, yeah, I would change this. I would talk about this. Let's work on this. Um, but I, I wouldn't say that I'm a hardcore die like Trump. Like I I support what he does. I'm just I, I, I'll call him out for the BS that he does sometimes mm-hmm. if he does it. Um, and so, and what was the rest? I didn't know. Um, it was saying something about. So obviously, you you do have a relationship with Trump Jr. And they were talking yeah. about you getting a "Make America Great" hat again. Here, let me read exactly what it says here for everyone. It says um, uh, Avila was able to get a signed "Make America Great Again" hat by the president, a gift his friend Trump Jr. gave him. Of course, Avila's relationship with Trump Jr. continued in Indianapolis where they ran into each other and they took the picture Trump Jr. claims was taken down by Instagram because he was in it. So this might be a little bit of a hit piece. This is um, a little yeah, yeah. easy. <laughs> yeah, it is. They try um, to make a no, little no. point. Is, what is Heavy Magazine, by the way? Is this a weightlifting thing? No, no, I don't think so. Oh, okay. 
I don't I know. I think it's just some it's just some tabloid type thing like uh oh, okay. oh. like Gawker. I think it's like Gawker. It's one of those like crappy oh, tabloid okay. things. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, no. So the the event in San Antonio, that was a private event. It wasn't open to the public. It was a public I mean it was a private fundraiser mm -hmm. and I got invited to it and you know, went backstage and met with, with the president and it was like the largest fundraiser private event that had ever mm -hmm. been held in the country. Um so it was all it wasn't open to the public. There was no cell phones, none of that stuff. Um, anyways, um, yeah, I received the hat from Junior. I, I can't remember what I had asked. or I think I said something online because he had posted a hat, and I was like, oh, those hats are cool. And next thing you know, you know, Junior sent me a hat signed mm -hmm. by his dad or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I actually used that hat uh, at a fundraiser that we had uh, for another nonprofit called The Boot Campaign, and we auctioned it off with, with a 1911 uh, that Ooh. had, you know, President's Trump face and stuff all over it. Oh, cool. So we raffled it off with a hat. Because um, I was like, you know what, like, this is cool for me to have. Like, I, I think it's it's a pretty cool thing. And, but I was like, I can, I, I, know, I know I can ask Junior for another one. Why don't we auction this off and make some money for this nonprofit? Yeah. And somebody out there that, that really yeah. loves President Trump and would love to have this going to benefit from so that's kind of the route that we went with that yeah i mean that's like obama giving someone a signed birth certificate from, from, from hawaii or something <laughs> i mean it did and, and from like in this thing it makes it sound like you went there and trump signed it for you but you're saying that drew jr arranged that it was like hey that to me yeah, yeah yeah and that's cool and yeah. then you 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 raffled it off anyway but you know i mean i don't uh, yeah, I don't really see anything wrong with that. I think probably I'm going to say that they didn't really want to beat up on you because, you know, you've obviously left your pound of flesh out there, but they were trying <laughs> to use this somehow to make some kind of thing, statement, I think, mm -hmm. about uh, Junior. And and when it comes to us as gun guys, we can, we can take a poll here. I'm sure there's some gun guys that just like 100% dogmatic to Trump and he could do nothing wrong and all that kind of stuff. I oh, think yeah. mo most of us are a little bit more rational than that. Yeah, and, and that's the thing, man. Like, listen, at the end of the day, do I support him? Do I, do I agree with, with, with him being in an office? Heck yeah, I, tell, I take him over Hillary all day, every day. Mm. Um, he's done a lot of good things. <laughs> Twice on country. Sunday. <laughs> yeah, he's done a lot of great things for the country. He's stepped up. He's done more than, than, than people like to think that he's done. And mm. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to look over the dumb that he says sometimes because he does say some dumb stuff like mm -hmm. he has a big mouth like a lot of the things <laughs> that that he says True. you know i feel like caters to people that don't necessarily or aren't necessarily super educated sometimes and and they're so easy to grab all this information and throw it out there like um so if, if i get a chance to to say something that i don't agree with and if it doesn't sit right with me i'm gonna speak my mind i've never been the type that I'm not. I'm not just gonna sit back and be like, "Well, he's on my side; that he can do nothing wrong." It's unrealistic. Mm -hmm. it, it really is. And and then it, I wouldn't be me if I if I came out and and supported every single thing that he does because I don't agree with it all. Yeah, um, I don't think any of us do. And uh, one of the things I think, like uh, you can tell me what you think about it. When I look, or Patrick, you can feel free to jump in here. Trump is a typical New Yorker. I grew up in New York. Yeah. Yeah. We talk a lot of in New York. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you bluff your way through a lot of things. <laughs> you do. I mean, dude, they, 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 they sit here and be realistic about this. You know, right. they, 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 he's come out and said, "I'm this great republic and I'm this." He's like, dude, you, you hung out with nothing but liberals. You were a liberal yourself. Like, you just found a, a, a market where you were able to cater to 51 percent of the country, and you were able to like come in and say the right things at the right time. And you won. Now you're doing good things, and 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 it's awesome to see. But let's not sit here and and, and act like he's always been a Republican and he's, you know, been a hardcore die, no. hardcore Republican. He hasn't. No, like, I think he was he he was a Democrat for a long time. I've always shown I always show people the video back in the days, like 1988. I remember that because I that's when I graduated high school. Uh, Oprah, he was on Oprah, and Oprah was trying to get him to run for president. He was on David yeah. Letterman. David Letterman was, these are not, these are Democrats. These are very yeah. liberal people. Yeah. Um, and he grew up really there. Really good friends of his. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And they, well, they were friends with him. The funny thing is, is now a lot of these people are not friends with him. Uh, there were a lot of, we've seen him in movies. He's been in rap videos. <laughs> 
He was the man up until he became president. <laughs> and I always yeah. remember it was like a, I remember when uh, the election night when Trump actually won and you guys could tell me if you're wrong. He had this look on his face like, what? These crazy people? Mm. <laughs> they actually elected me? What? Yeah, he was, he, he, yeah, I remember that. He was cut off guard like, wait, we won? Yeah, like, it's what? like, oh, is this going to happen? Yeah. Is this for real? Yeah, it, and it's because you know, of Hillary. That, it's because of Hillary. Like you said, man, oh, nobody yeah, wanted Hillary. Hillary. No, dude, you had Democrats that didn't even want Hillary as a president. Yeah. I bet you yeah, Clinton, man, I, Bill Clinton didn't vote for Hillary. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I believe it. I don't think you did. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm serious. I bet you if we could look into this, we would find out he didn't do it. He didn't want to be the first husband or whatever nonsense no. they were going to come up with. No, no. Yeah. No. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.